Hello students, I am Ravi Bhatt, Research Scholar, Department of English, Dr. Harisingar Central University, Sagar, Madhya Pradesh. And today, I am going to deliver this lecture on behalf of Dr. Gyanesh Kumar Tiwari, Assistant Professor, Department of Psychology, School of Humanities and Social Sciences, Dr. Harisingar Central University, Sagar, Madhya Pradesh. This episode will start with the introduction and history of polygraph followed by the discussion on the procedure of polygraph. Then we will throw some light on the advantages and disadvantages of polygraph. The role of polygraph in criminal investigation will be discussed at length. We will also discuss about the ethical and legal aspects of polygraph. And finally, this episode will end with the major conclusions. The presentation in this episode will follow the following order. We will start with module 1, introduction to polygraph, module 2, history of polygraph, module 3, parameters in polygraph, module 4, procedure of polygraph, module 5, advantages and disadvantages of polygraph, module 6, role of polygraph in criminal investigations, module 7, ethical and legal aspects of polygraph and finally module 8 the conclusion. I will start the discussion with the meaning of the word polygraph. Polygraph is a mechanical device designed to measure and record physiological changes in the pulse, breathing rates, skin conductance etc. of an individual for detecting the deception and lie. It is also known as lie detector, a common word which you might have heard a lot of times. These measures are taken while the criminals are asked questions regarding their roles in any criminal activity and they are expected to answer those questions honestly. This technique is based on rational that deceptive answers will induce physiological responses that can be distinguished from the changes occurring as a result of non-deceptive answers. Now it is assumed that these physiological changes are regulated by autonomic nervous system over which the individuals have no voluntary control as the details of a crime is unusual and comprises of the contents of emotionality, asking questions or putting anything related to the crime will induce the physiological upheaval which is not in the voluntary control of the person. In most of the criminal investigations, it is a very challenging task to detect and uncover deception and discriminate between real and deceptive responses, Ben Chakha, 1991. When it is not possible for interrogating agencies to uncover the truth by means of direct measures or the evidence of crime is not known and traceable, the use of polygraph is left among the only few alternatives. The detection of deception with the help of polygraph is useful in criminal investigations, psychotherapy as well as personal selection. In addition, the results from a polygraph can have significant legal, social, familial and personal consequences. An individual's life can basically be altered by the polygraph test and thus its use has both advantages as well as limitations. In spite of its limitations and controversies, the polygraph test is used worldwide and is reported to give reliable, valid and useful results to the court. The history of polygraph is merely 100 years old. In 1730, Daniel Defoe wrote an essay and recommended that taking the pulse of suspects is a practical, effective and humane method for distinguishing truthfulness from lying. In 1846, Ludwig, a German physiologist, invented chromographion to record changes in arterial blood pressure and respiration to understand the correlation between external respiration and the circulatory system. It helped the physiologists to have quantitative measurement of the physiological activities. In 1878, Angelo Mosso, an Italian physiologist, discovered plethysmograph to measure emotion and fear while questioning and its relationship with cardiovascular and respiratory activity. He was the first person to argue that breathing pattern of a person changes under stimulus condition which in turn causes variations in their blood pressure and pulse rate. In 1892, James Mackenzie, a well-known surgeon of London, constructed the clinical polygraph to detect 
deception in individuals during medical examinations through the measurement of the vascular pulses with the help of a metal stylus connected to a rotating drum of smoked paper. Till 1895, no instrument was used for the detection of deception. The first use of physiological measures for the legal purpose was done in 1895 by criminologist Lembrose. He used this device to measure blood pressure and pulse rate of a suspect of a crime during a police interrogation. He did not invent the polygraph, but he was the first person to use the instrument to determine the truthfulness from deception in crime suspects. The prototype of polygraph was invented by Mackenzie in 1902. It was John Larson, a medical student of the University of California, who is credited for the development of modern polygraph in 1921. The basic features of the polygraph invented by Larson were this version of the machine was more accurate in its results. It comprised the measurement of pulse rate, blood sugar and respiratory rate. It recorded the information on a rotating drum of smoke paper. An important change was incorporated in 1925 by Leonard Keeler, who refined it by replacing smoke paper to record the physiological measures of the suspects with ink pen to add more clarity and efficiency. Keeler also introduced a new feature in the then existing polygraph in 1938 by adding galvanic skin resistance as a new measure. Keeler is known as the father of polygraph. The polygraph underwent many changes in different periods of time. John Reed added control questions as a baseline measure for comparison and analysis from relevant questions. Many features were added to the polygraph later on and it took its more modern shape when it was computerized in 1992 which resulted in increased efficiency and accuracy in its measurement and applications. Baxter 1960 introduced quantification system of chart analysis to make it more objective and scientific which is the standard procedure even today. Kircher and Ruskin 1988 developed computer assisted polygraph system that is known as CAPS to evaluate physiological data for the diagnostic purposes. Oyson and Harris 1993 developed PolyScore, a software program to analyze the polygraph data and to estimate a statistical probability of deception in a subject after questioning. United States Department of Defense Polygraph Institute 2003 developed PolyScore version 5.1 to analyze the data from polygraph examinations of 1411 real life criminal cases which increased 98% accuracy to quantify, analyze and evaluate the physiological data of real life crime. Today, polygraph is used in more than 50 countries by government organizations, law enforcement agencies, the legal community, the corporate sector and private citizens. The Encyclopedia Britannica 2003 placed the polygraph in the list of 325 greatest inventions of human beings. The polygraph measure a num measures a number of directly unobservable, undetectable and involuntary changes in physiological functions. These measures include first the galvanic skin response GSR. This is measured through the use of electrode on palm of fingers which involves the measurement of the short term change in skin resistance. Second, the blood pressure. A systolic and diastolic blood pressure is measured with the help of smigmograph which is placed on upper arm of the suspect. Third, the respiration. The third parameter in polygraph is respiration. It is measured with the help of pneumograph which is placed on the chest. The fourth, the vasomotor response VMR. This response consists of the blood flow in, on, in the tip of the index finger. This is called the vasomotor response VMR and is similar to the GSR. Ideally, variations of these four dimensions are measured. Some of these physiological responses are recorded on a polygraph chart. The task of the polygrapher now is to interpret and explain these changes as indicative of truthfulness or deception. Now, we'll proceed to the basic procedure adopted 
in conducting actual polygraph test in the next module. The polygraph examination involves assessment of physiological responses of the subject to a set of questions. The aim of the assessment is to bring out physiological reactions to relevant questions and compare the physiological reactions to control questions. The relevant questions have direct consonance to the focus of the investigation, whereas the control questions are not directly related to the focus of the investigation, but they have the capacity to arouse the suspects emotionally. In addition to these two types of questions, another type of questions are also used, which is known as irrelevant questions. These questions are not related to the focus of the investigation and is believed to have little emotional impact and used for comparison and analysis. The procedure according to Sakes et al. 1985, an ideal polygraph test involves the following steps which last for three to four hours. First phase. The very first phase involves the pre-test interview which extends for 30 to 60 minutes. Furidi 1991. In this phase, the examiner attempts to convince the examinee of the infallibility of the test by discussing the relevant issues regarding the tests and constructions of relevant and control questions. The relevant questions are reformulated until they are unambiguous to the examinee. The control questions are reframed to produce the physiological responses indicating that the subject is capable of responding. Second, stimulation tests. Generally, the actual test phase is preceded by the card or stimulus test. In this phase, the examiner applies the polygraph to the detect the card the examinee has in his mind. The purpose of this test is to convince the examinee of the infallibility of the polygraph. Third, test phase proper. After the demonstrating the credibility of the test, the test proper is administered. The test phase typically comprises of 10 questions out of which at least Three questions are relevant questions and the rest are control questions. These two types of questions are presented in random order with a gap of 30 seconds in repetition, known as a chart. It has been observed that after the administration of at least three charts, the test is concluded. Fourth, the post-test interview. With the help of the analysis of the data of the test phase, the honesty or deception is determined. To determine the truth or deception of the examinee, the examiner conducts a post-test interview with the objective to induce a confession which may span for 10 minutes to several hours. This phase ends with the confession of the examinee or the realization of the examiner that confession cannot be materialized. Fifth, examining the evidence. To examine the validity of the method, it is obligatory to conduct a blind scoring of charts by a second examiner or expert who does not observe the examinee and is unknown to the facts of the case. Thus, to establish validity of the test scores, the blind scoring and testing of the polygraph in real life situations are essential by involving volunteers. In the next module, we will discuss the major advantages and disadvantages of the polygraph test. Polygraph test involves a set of scientific procedures to evaluate psychophysiological responses that are assumed to happen in responses to the emotions of fear or conflict or are in some other way associated with lying or deception. With the passage of time, it gained its status as a scientific tool in uncovering deception and helped the legal system to come up with reliable information and to dispose the criminal investigations of suspects accused of theft, rape, murder, etc. in a relatively shorter period of time. It is evident that the use of polygraph technique is very important as it is a reliable and the only method left in the hands of the investigators and the court to reach the truth in the case of unavailability and non-workability of the other methods. The researchers have claimed that polygraph tests evince more than 90% accuracy as it follows reliable, valid and sound scientific principles. 
Lecono and Patrick 1999. As this technique has sound scientific base, it has a great value and has been recommended in criminal court proceedings and screening of employees. It has also shown its effectiveness in dealing with sex offenders. There are many advantages of using polygraph as a method of detecting deception or lying. The major advantages of polygraph are as under. The first, polygraph is very helpful in detecting deception in criminal cases. Its reliability and validity are very high. Second, it can also be used as a supplementary method of investigation of criminal cases of various types. Third, with the help of its measurements and conclusions, the guilty can be induced to confess to his or her crime. Fourth, the results obtained by polygraph are reliable and it can discriminate between the innocent and the guilty. Fifth, another advantage of the use of polygraph is that it can replace the third degree methods used in many types of interrogations by investigating officers. Sixth, it has the capacity to narrow down the field of inquiry of the investigating agencies. Seventh, polygraph can also be used as a method through which the honesty of the statement of a witness can be verified. Eighth, it has applications in psychotherapy too. Ninth, the use of polygraph has been applied in the context of personal selection. And now we'll discuss some of the limitations of polygraph. Disadvantages of polygraph. The application of the polygraph requires a skilled examiner and its findings are determined by the psychological state of the subject, the scoring procedures, the questioning techniques and the particular physiological measures. The following are the major disadvantages of the use of polygraph. The first, the polygraph procedures are based on the assumptions which cannot be validated scientifically, Bashore and Rapp 1993 and thus it is said to be based on subjective assumptions. Second, its use requires a well-trained and skilled examiner having a good background in psychology or psychophysiology. Third, it is not very useful in the case of criminals who are hardcore, notorious and have high self-control. Fourth, polygraph test neither meets the required criteria of standardization nor the established criteria of reliability and validity for psychological tests, Kahneman's and Schuzo, 1984. Fifth, it is very difficult to establish the correlations between the physiological changes and their psychological correlates in many cases. Now, we'll proceed to talk about the role played by polygraph in criminal investigations. Despite its weak theoretical and empirical foundation, polygraph has been very useful and reliable for more than 50 years. It plays a very important role in criminal investigations. The following are the points through which its role can be explained. First, it helps the investigators to confess their crime and resolve the case. Second, polygraph helps to screen employees of their alcoholic use, sex lives and other suspect behaviors and other valuable information that cannot be gathered through other sources. Third, it helps the prosecutors and investigating agencies where there is no sufficient evidence of the crime except the suspect. Fourth, it also helps to avoid the use of third degree with the criminals. Fifth, it gives good and reliable results if practiced by trained and skilled examiners. Module 7, Ethical and Legal Aspects of Polygraph. Polygraph is based on psychological principles and the ethical standards require a test naturally applies to the administration of polygraph. The standards for educational and psychological tests of American Psychological Association 1992 has prescribed the following ethical principles for its use. First. Psychologists do not promote the use of psychological assessment techniques by unqualified persons, APA 1992. 
Second, psychologists recognize the limits to the certainty with which diagnosis, judgments or predictions can be made about individuals. Third, psychologists attempt to identify situations in which particular interventions or assessment techniques or norms may not be applicable or may require adjustments in administration or interpretation because of factors such as individual's gender, age, race, ethnicity, national origin, religion, sexual orientation, disability, language or socio-economic status. Fourth, psychologists take into account the various test factors and characteristics of the person being assessed that might affect psychologists' judgments or reduce the accuracy of their interpretations. They indicate any significant reservations they have about the accuracy or limitations of their interpretations. Some of the American courts have recognized the usefulness of polygraph test for criminal investigations. The use of polygraph in Canada, England, France and Germany is not widespread. In India, a beginning was made by the Central Forensic Science Laboratory of Central Bureau of Investigation, New Delhi by providing the facility of polygraph for the purpose of criminal investigation. A number of other institutions have since introduced the facility. The polygraph test results do not appear to have been utilized in the courts. However, there is no law which forbids the use of polygraph in the criminal investigations. In fact, Section 45 of the Indian Evidence Act is wide enough to accept the polygraph evidence. In 1999, the National Human Rights Commission in a petition from Sri Inder P. Chaudhary, a resident of New Delhi, issued guidelines relating to administration of the polygraph test. In 2008, an Indian court accepted brain electrical oscillation signature profiling test as evidence to convict a woman accused of killing her husband, which was the first use of polygraph in the Indian court. In its decision in 2010, the Supreme Court of India declared use of nacroanalysis, brain mapping and polygraph tests on suspects as illegal and against the constitution. Article 20, section 3 of the Indian constitution states, no person accused of any offence shall be compelled to be a witness against himself. Use of polygraph test is legal only when the defendant requests one. Let us conclude our discussion on polygraph now. Polygraph is a mechanical device designed to measure and record physiological changes in pulse, breathing rates, skin conductance, etc. of an individual for detecting the deception and the lie. These measures are taken while the criminals are asked questions regarding their roles in any criminal activities and answer those questions. This technique is based on the rationale that deceptive answers will induce physiological responses that can be distinguished from the changes occurring as a result of non-deceptive answers. The prototype of polygraph was invented by McKenzie in 1902, whereas Larson is credited for the development of modern polygraph in 1921. Keeler, who is also known as the father of polygraph, has made many modifications in polygraph technique. It was computerized in 1992, which increased its efficiency and accuracy. The polygraph involves the measurement of galvanic skin response, blood pressure, respiration and the vasomotor responses. The standard procedure contains the first phase, stimulation tests, test phase proper, post-test interview and examining the evidence. The use of polygraph has many advantages. It is very helpful in detecting deception in criminal cases. It is reliable and valid measure. It helps confess suspects, acts as a supplementary method, discriminates between the innocent and the guilty, can replace the third degree methods, helps to narrow down the field of inquiry and verify honesty of the witness. It has significant applications in psychotherapy and personal selection also. The polygraph is also made by some limitations. It requires trained and skilled experts. 
It also lacks tough validated scientific base and standardization. It sometimes gives unreliable correlations between the physiological changes and their psychological responses. With all this information here, we come to the end of today's lecture. Do keep in mind what we have discussed today. It's time for you all to do some self-study. This is Ravi Bhatt signing off for today. If you want to learn more and enhance your knowledge, you may log on to our website for MCQs, quizzes and LORs. Our website is www.cec.nic.in. We'll be back soon with one more interesting lecture of the series. Till then, goodbye. Bye.